Hey guys, welcome back to Summer School. It's Rutgers Day. That means I'm bringing on my man, Bobby Darren of Scarlet Nation. Bobby, welcome to the show. Let's talk a little Rutgers. All right. Thanks for having me on, but I appreciate it. Yeah, man. So uh, four and eight last year, I know they suffered some difficult preseason injuries, at least looking back through my notes that had seemed to uh, to hamper them at times. Uh, let's just jump on it. I mean, four and eight, they were, Bill Connolly had them 97th in the country, uh, looks like in terms of power rating. So not not really, you know, a super competitive team. There were some some bright spots, which which I I know we hope will, will shine a little brighter uh, this year. But let's let's jump into this thing. So last year the offense was 119th in the country, uh, opponent adjusted, and, and really just not competitive uh, on a week to week basis. Uh, they played Gavin Wimsat a lot. He, he he took the most snaps at quarterback. Do you think there's pressure to play him? because of his high recruiting ranking because like the numbers there I mean 29% success rate on dropbacks is the lowest I've seen ever on like on, on any spreadsheet of a quarterback that's a starter and you know less than a, a, a ratio of 1 for touchdown interception less than 50% completions like it, do they think he's turning the corner like it, do you think they're pl like playing him because they've sold him to the boosters Could, is there any hope this guy can actually play well, last year, the plan wasn't to play him. Noah Vedro was supposed to play and start for the third season. He suffered an injury in training camp, and it was a hand injury, and it just never healed correctly. So mm -hmm. they were going back and forth. Wimsett was actually platooning with Evan Simon. Wimsett got hurt. And then when he came back, Vedro still wasn't right. Simon didn't do the job. So the staff kind of said, look, let's let's play him and, and let's let's hope this works for next year and let's build this young player. But I don't think it was initially pressure boosters or anything. It was just kind of out of necessity because uh, Vedro was injured and Evan Simon just wasn't getting the job done. You know, they, they lost two games against Nebraska and Iowa in which the defense played well enough to win, but the offense was just giving the ball away and just and not doing anything. So. They just turned it over to Wimsett and said, hey, let's play for the future. And hopefully that experience uh, will help this season. And he has looked a lot better in spring practice. So, I mean, it remains to be seen what he's going to do this year. But, you know, the plan wasn't just to play him regardless last year. They were kind of forced into it a little bit. He was also a kid, if I recall, who reclassified up. So, he, like, he skipped a year of of high school, which I, I think if you're a quarterback dad out there, it's – I know it's attractive to do that at times, but I don't know that that's necessarily the best idea. Like I, I, I know as an evaluator, I, I like when guys get a lot of reps at the high school level and and get mm -hmm. get a whole lot of experience. Uh, you know, Noah's gone this year. Simon and Wimsett are back. Is it safe to assume that, that Gavin is going to be the starter? Yeah, he's. I mean, Greg's gonna, not going to come out and say, "Oh, he's our guy right now," but he's mm -hmm. the guy. You know, um, you, you're going to see him. You know, the, the staff try to really roll with him and they have three pivotal games from from their vantage point early in the season open with the, uh, Northwestern Temple and Virginia Tech. And, for, you know, if you're talking about Rutgers making a bowl game, you pretty much have to go through a clean sweep of those three games. So they're really prepping him for that role. And he did look better in spring practice. The accuracy was better. He was more composed. He looked a little more mature. And as you said, he came in as a high school senior and as a quarterback. It's a really tough adjustment, especially when you're on an offense that really hasn't been successful. So he wasn't like he could just chuck it up to playmakers or had all time, all the time in the world to throw the ball. And um, he was also his ankle wasn't 100 percent last year when he was starting. He looks a lot faster this year. So um, the plan is to really try to let him, you know, live up to somewhere near his his uh, high school ranking. No doubt about it. And look, guys, there's no law that says you can't improve. So I, I, I am I am hopeful that, that that he will improve. We'll see if he can get to sort of a. A more playable level and you mentioned the schedule there uh yeah no doubt about it. like they do get northwestern from the west they also draw iowa and wisconsin who are, are kind of the the co-favorites from the west you get wagner in the non-conference as well uh but it's not crazy to think that if they were to sweep that first three you, obviously you, you you will you will beat wagner uh, unless some, some kind of really weird stuff happens which if you sweep the first three you're not going to lose to wagner uh, and mm -hmm. then maybe indiana or or maryland or uh who knows? Maybe Iowa's offense just doesn't show up. Like that's mm -hmm. certainly happened before. Right. Uh, so, right. yeah, I, I I could see an, an upside if, if everything goes right of, of a bowl game there. Um, run game should be kind of a strength, I guess. They, they return almost everybody in the backfield. Um, Kyle was the leader last year in terms of carries and yards. Is there any reason to think it, it won't be him and Brown uh, again in the backfield? Or, or is there somebody kind of down the depth chart who could be primed to step up? 
Well, I, I think Aaron Young will be uh, the second running back. He was injured in the um, Tax Slayer Gator Bowl when they took that spot, uh, okay. you know, prior to last season. And he just wasn't recovered from a knee injury last year, but he's looked really good in spring ball. And he kind of compliments Sam Brown. I think Kyle Manunga will get some carries in there, but I think it'll be Brown and and Aaron Young more as your one-two punch. And they're, they're both good running backs, but as you know, they're only going to be as good as the offensive line can push them to be. Um, you have seen improvements. They brought Pat Flaherty in, you know, former New York Giants offensive line coach for many years. Um, so they did look better in the spring as well. Um, I wouldn't expect leaps and bounds improvements, but, you know, just being able to sustain something in, in, in that aspect of the game should really help the offense. And, and they have the backs to do it. They just got to give them some room to run. Receiver seems like, like a position that lost uh, quite a bit. Their, their top three guys, at least uh, in terms of, of target share, are all gone in, in uh, Crunkshake, uh, Ryan, and Jones. How do you feel about this unit? Do you think there, there's guys here who can step up and take their place? Well, they, they just uh, pulled in a transfer in Jaquay Jackson. He's a Division II California guy, but, he you know, he had a, you know, a high teens offers, was a really sought after guy, you know, was visiting Colorado, Miami, um, Texas A&M, all these big schools wanted him. Michigan State was after him. So it was a big land for them. And he's going to be their number one guy, you know, can do a lot of things, had a big year uh, last season. So we'll see if he can make the step up to the Big Ten, but he's probably going to jump in and be that number one guy. They brought in another transfer from uh, Western Illinois, Nicene Brantley. Uh, Chris Long is a younger guy who they're going to turn to this year. But you know, even those guys left last year, then they did make catches. It wasn't like they were, you know, first round picks. You know, they were just they, they, they're not going to be huge voids to fill, um, even though they they produced. It wasn't like, you know, th this group was really paving the way for a spectacular offense. So offensive line was improved at times last year. They, they did have some some health issues where they you know, had to play the backups maybe more than, than they wanted to uh, throughout mm -hmm. the year. But they returned. So they lose Willie Tyler to the transfer portal, which I guess could hurt. There, there were some teams that thought he was you know, a fairly good player. Uh, the, the metrics don't totally agree, but I, I guess we'll see who's right on that, the the, the eyes or, or, or the nerds. Uh, and then you know, J.D. Dorenzo, the left guard, uh, is gone. Is this a unit that, that could avoid taking a step back? Good. You know, and Tyler was benched at the end of the season for Lorenzo. They moved him over to yeah. left tackle. So, they, you know, there's not a lot of depth, a proven depth there. They have a lot of guys, but not a lot of guys you can really turn to. And and I think the, the hope is really that this new offense behind – um you know, offensive coordinator Kurt Soraka from Minnesota and Pat Flaherty working the offensive line will help with those improvements. And, and like I said, the unit did look more cohesive. It did look like a better unit in, in the spring. But, you know, I've seen spring flashes before, you know, and, and then, you know, it doesn't always translate. But there is hope for the offense. I mean, it wasn't like they, they went out and, and completely restructured the O-line. The hope is that these guys will develop a little bit better, you know, under this new coaching regime. Let's turn to the defense now, Bobby. So much better on defense, which is kind mm -hmm. of a hallmark of Greg Schiano. And I, I don't know. Like I think cover three listeners know. I, I, I think Schiano can coach. I, mm -hmm. I do think he knows what he's doing. I think they're good talent evaluators, and they're just kind of in an impossible situation in, you know, in in, in the Big Ten, especially with, with the divisional structure, which I guess they're, they're pretty fortunate it's going away. I think just to be able to play. Yeah. Not not that they've necessarily done well against the West teams, but they're. There's more hope when, when you're not playing Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State every year. Yes. You know, uh, defensive mm -hmm. line should be pretty darn, like, strong, right? Bailey's back. Lewis is back. Hamilton, Rainey. Uh, a bunch of guys are back. Like, is there upside there for them to take a big step? Or is it just like, hey, consistent, we know what we got here. There, there's a lot of veterans. I, I think the, uh, the defense can be really good. They also brought in old Miss transfer defensive lineman Isaiah Aiton, who will be there for a year. Um, so the linebacking core is really stacked. I mean, all three levels, they have good players. Um, problem is, you know, when, when they're playing well and, and the offense is going three and out, three and out, three and out, by the end of the game, you're getting gassed. And, and you know, it, they need that offense to sustain some drives and keep them off the field. Um, that was the big, you know, the big drawback from them last year. And, and even when they played Iowa last year, they lost 27-10, but they gave up. The offense gave them two touchdowns. So, you know, you take them away and, and it was really a close game. So they really weren't helped out much last year by that offense. So um, I, I think you see, a, you know, some NFL draft picks in there, you know, not – 
you know, first round guys, but you're going to see some guys get selected, especially some of the names you said, you know, uh, Keontae Hamilton, uh, uh, Aaron Lewis, Wesley Bailey, all guys with, with a real high ceiling. Absolutely. Linebacker also returns basically everybody who played at all. And mm -hmm. I had this guy marked on my sheet preseason last year as an important injury. They lost uh, Muhammad. Is it Torre? I don't know in, sure, in the yes. preseason and like his 21 numbers were really strong. So mm -hmm. I, I'm curious, is he is, like, I know he's back on the roster. Is he back and healthy? Like, is he a guy that, that that's going to be able to make an impact? Yeah, he, he's back to health. I've seen him. He looks like a freak, um, yeah. really good shape. And he's, you know, they're going to switch him between linebacker and, and that end and the hybrid rusher type. And he should have a really, really good season. And and another guy who was lost for the year was Moses Walker, former four star, you know, picked Rutgers over Penn State. Um, he was he had an ACL along with Muhammad Ture. It happened, you know, weeks apart in the last spring. So he'll be back and I could see him actually jumping into a starting role by the end of the season, just a really good player. So uh, that linebacker position, you know, uh, Greg likes to use two linebackers at times. So um, two guys that he should have in there and the guys rotate again, it should be a really tough, um, tough unit. And you might, you might see him use three just because of all the talent he has across the board. Tyreen Powell is another guy. I think you should watch for on, on, uh, you know, in, in the draft next year, six, five can really move, uh, you know, just, not your common size and athleticism for a linebacker, but that unit should be really good. But the back end concerns me a little bit. I I, I thought Avery Young and and and, uh, and and Christian Eisen were pretty solid corners, and now those guys are gone. Uh, Braswell's gone as well. I know they attacked the transfer portal here pretty hard. Uh, have you been able to get eyes on on the guys they took in the portal so far? And, and what what do you mm -hmm. think as far as the? I assume there's some kind of drop off here, but maybe not. Maybe they're actually. Uh, upgrades o over what they had. Well, you know, Avery Young played his first three years at corner and then went to safety, and, and he had some struggles at the position. So you have um, – they brought in uh, Flip Dixon from Minnesota, who has starting experience. He's going to be playing that back end there at safety. Um, you have Desmond Igbenusen, who's also uh, – who's a returning starter. I think you're going to see a big jump up from him this season. Uh, Shaquan Loyal takes over for – former four-star takes over for Christian Izian, and he's he should be able to step right in there. And, and Greg loaded up on corners, Eric Rogers from – Northern Illinois looked really good in in the uh, in the spring. I think he's a guy to, to really keep an eye on. Max Melton should be a guy who is probably their highest pick after this year leaving uh, in the 24 draft class. So um, Greg coaches the, the he takes some time to coach the defensive backs too. I, I think you'll see uh, that unit. They they should be pretty solid this year. Now you can only cover for so long, so they're going to have to depend on that pass rush to get to the quarterback. So um, you know that works on like kind of a hinge. So um, you know, I, but I, I think they'll be stacked across the board on defense, and that's not the issue. The issue really, bud, what we talked about is can that offense really get anything going and then help them out a little bit? I mean, if the offense can go from 119th to like, you know, 80th even, which is a, a, a 40 spot jump, I mean, that, that would really enable them to play enough close. If the defense is as good as we think it can potentially be, we would not like that. That lets them play enough close games. Maybe the coin flips fall their way and, and they do, right. they do make a bowl game. One thing that really helped out the defense last year, uh, though, and we don't talk a ton of special teams on this show, but Bobby, this punter, uh, Corsak, yeah. was ridiculously yeah. good. I mean, like, I know, top two, three punter in the country for sure. And now he's gone. Uh, what do they have behind him? I don't even know, like, who the listed punter is going to be for this year. Well, they brought in another Australian, this kid, Flynn Appleby. So, okay. I mean, he's he's done well, but he's got such big shoes to fill. I mean, Corsak was not only good, he was good for five years there. Yeah. So, I mean, there's every year who's the MVP of the team, Corsak, Corsak, Corsak. And, yes, he's the punter, but he just did some amazing things. I mean, he went over two years without a touchback. You know what I mean? And and was just pinning teams and the field position game was was helped so much by by what he could do. Ninety percent so, uh, fair catch rate for Corsac. It's it was insane. You'd watch him and, and it just, you know, you would just be like, wow, every week. This is I mean, it's really to have an, a net average of 44 and a 90 percent catch rate is not normal. Like normal, like okay, you you may you may hit some bombs, but then like the guys return them like he was hitting bombs that, were, that would hang for a long time. And mm -hmm. that was, yeah, that, that's going to be very interesting to follow because like Rutgers could have an act legitimately much improved defense and mm -hmm. still allow about the same number of points. If opponents are starting, you know, five, six yards, better field position right. than they were mm -hmm. last year. I guess that's, you know, we'll have to remind, remember to do that in the component analysis. 
Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this. When you're out at practice or when you're talking to your sources, mm-hmm. where's the spot that, like, okay, the backups can't play? Like, or they're not ready to play yet this season that they really have to stay healthy at this spot because the backups just are, are not not able to really play. What? Well, the old line for one, I mean, okay. you have, and, and to give you an example on that, but the the backup tackle, Kamar Missouri, will probably be the guy that goes left and right tackle. So if your left tackle gets hurt, your right tackle gets hurt, he's probably the guy that goes in for both of them. So when you have one guy going that way, because there really isn't another guy to fill in, um, I think if they start getting decimated on the old line, it's it's trouble you know because you're 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 just hoping some of these guys can be cohesive enough to give you some pulse on offense and if they start going down you know you're going back to trying to develop some younger guys guys who haven't played and and um you know things could get ugly there absolutely uh, by the way, let me ask you this i i i think i know the answer for some schools like, like west virginia and, and and maryland um but i'm not sure i know for Rutgers. like like are Rutgers fans happy with the move to the Big Ten? Like with, with no. West with, with Maryland, they're like, okay, we got the money, but like fans don't make the money, right? That that right. that the program gets. Rutgers was, was in the old Big East, so you know, kind of falling apart as as, as a conference. Are they happy with this move? Oh, very much so. They just, okay. you know, it, after after Greg left, um, Kyle Flood was still playing with some of Greg's players. First year, they finished eight and five, you know, in the Big Ten, beat Michigan that year. So things were looking up, but then Flood era kind of just, you know, went downhill quick. And then they hired Chris Ash and it went downhill even faster. And it, it was kind of like when Seattle came back, they were excited because this is the place where they wanted to be in the Big Ten, but just didn't have the means to compete there. And there were some dark years there, you know, during when Chris Ash was there. I mean, you're talking, they, they lost a the game to Michigan 78 to nothing, you know, and, and didn't get first down until the first fourth quarter. So um, the move was, you know, embraced, I mean, you know, across the board in all sports and you've seen the success in basketball. So the hope is that the football team can kind of emulate that, that rise and resurgence that they've seen on the basketball court. And Shiano did it once. So there's still confidence he can do it again. Bobby, really appreciate the time today, man. This has been fun. Everybody needs to check out Scarlet Nation. Got the QR code if you guys are watching us down on YouTube, down in the corner, and uh, we'll have to catch up again soon. All right. Thanks for having me, bud. I appreciate it.